Brad, 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 Brad. Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It's time for an impromptu live stream. Um, I'm sure you will have all seen and heard the amazing Christmas news, Christmas present for Diego Lorente, anyway, at least. It is the news, of course, breaking totally out of the blue, straight out of Rads' backside, is the news that Diego Lorente has signed a new deal that will see him here till 2026. Why? Why, I hear you ask. Well, I do not know. I don't understand the rhyme or reason behind us signing Diego Lorente for a further three years, 2026, so in effect four more years. Um, Carlos says, good to see you getting behind our players, Joe. I don't think he deserves a new deal. We cannot, listen, people won't like what I have to say. Service announcement, I don't give a shit. You come for my view, if you want my view, take it on. If you don't, then that's fine. But this is nothing, listen, you cannot blindly say blindly say, oh, okay, well, there are players, so therefore I am going to uh, support them 100% no matter what. When they cross the white line, yes, yes, of course. But outside of that, you're allowed to be critical. And I don't believe that Diego Lorente deserves a new deal that will see him stay till 2026. It's as simple as that. But if you want to say, oh, well, yeah, nice to see you getting behind, I don't care. I don't rate him. I don't think he fits what we're trying to do. He's an absolute calamity, as Ricky says. And at what stage have you looked at Lorente and said, do you know what? We need to keep this guy tied down. You know, he came on the pitch in the friendly. We conceded three goals. Now, I'm not one of them who thinks he's culpable for that. I think that's down to Jesse and the system. And we'll talk about that later on because I'm annoyed at that situation that seems to um, uh, 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 be up for debate on social media. But like I say, you come for my opinion, I'll give you mine. But at what stage this season have you watched Leeds United in any performance and gone, Diego Lorente has been 7 out of 10 consistently. Do you know what? He deserves a new deal. Pascal Straub, yes, because he was on pittance. He has a future at the football club and has been one of the best players. Diego Lorente, for me, shouldn't even be starting in this side. Now, if it comes out that he's taken a hefty pay cut, then fair enough. But I'd still argue I'd want to move him on. I do not understand why he has got a new deal. I, I, I'm, I'm on the lines of, like, read the room. Read the room. Because at what point has anybody looked at the board level and gone, this is a good deal? Let's not forget, I mean, I guess, like someone said earlier, he's an international centre-back, isn't he? That's what we'll get told in the programme notes anyway. You know, like we did with our international strikers. And now it's, oh, well, he's an international centre-back. I don't even know how he gets in the Spain setup. if I'm being totally honest. Rodrigo's closer to it than him. And I'm not, you know, Rodrigo's biggest fan. Robert says he's got a retirement plan. Exactly. This is class for Diego, you know. He'll be 33. He'll probably retire at the football club. I think it's mental. You know, Sky, Sky Sports News, Football Daily on Twitter were like an early Christmas present for Diego Lorente as he signs a new deal. Yeah, an early Christmas present for him. Not for me, not for you. You know, some say blindly support the players. No, because I don't think we should. That's gone now. That's gone. Gone are the days where Bielsa kept me in my, you know, oh, everything's amazing, you know. I was living in cloud cuckoo land. Now I see it for what it is. And I agree with Nige D. It's embarrassing. What has he done to deserve a new deal? What's next? What's next? Furpo. Shall we get Furpo on as well? And Jordi, I don't agree with it in increasing his value before a sale. Who's going to buy him? Who's buying Diego Lorente? Who's buying Diego Lorente? Nobody. Nobody. What was his what when was his deal ending prior to that? Wasn't this summer, was it? Was it next summer? 
Do you know what I mean? I, I genuinely am flabbergasted. Yeah, Russ, next will be a deal for Furpo, mark my words, best believe. You know, I've seen someone on Twitter say, don't, don't, don't just double down on it. It's like the club are doubling down on it and say, saying, um, oh, well, these fans don't have a clue. They don't think we have a clue anyway. Let's not forget when they fucking changed our badge, for God's sake. I know they've done a lot right, but come on, man. It was a monstrosity. That should tell us all we need to know, really. I'm really grateful. It sounds like sour grapes. I'm really grateful for what they did in terms of getting us back to the Premier League, but it's time to pass the baton on for me. Do you know? Um, to, to be fair, like, just even going back to the, the badge thing, you know, even when you look at that documentary, Rad Razani tried to get 32 red in red. He tried to get red in the lead shirt, man. It's little nuances like that where you're like, Mm, yeah, nah, nah. Um, I'm really grateful for a lot he's done. Really, really am. I just even think going to Ellen Road's a, a much better, you know, atmosphere just with the fans on. There's little changes like that. Amazing. Yeah, really grateful. We're back where we belong. But if we're not careful, we are going to go down. You know, I, I, I'm. Uh, Frank says, what's going on? Diego Lorente has been given a new deal that will see him here to 2026. When he's 33, we are literally saying, do you know what, Diego? Thanks for your services. You might as well fucking retire here. What what have we seen for, for him to warrant that? My uh, Wi-Fi looks like it's dropping. It hasn't done that in a long time. The weather's really, really bad in the northeast currently. Um, it should be sorting itself out now. My apologies, because normally Virgin is absolutely bob on. Unless Diego's up here and he's smashing my Wi-Fi box up. Um, yeah, listen, we should have known. We should have known, though, Darren, when you said Real Saucier Dad fans were happy to see the back of him. Yeah, they were. And now... We want him gone and we've given him a new deal. I hate doing it as well because I almost feel bad for the guy. But I don't... Look, we have... Liam Cooper could be on his way out. Maybe that's why they're keeping Lorente around the place. But I'd argue those that hammer Cooper, Cooper's streets ahead of Lorente in terms of, you know, a little bit of consistency. You might not rate his level, but he's consistently at a similar level. Lorente comes on and he's absolute kamikaze. He's absolute kamikaze. There was one stage where he tried a back pass against Monaco and nearly put them in. Can you imagine any of our defence, let alone Diego Lorente, up against fucking Haaland? So, so you've got... Lorente, Cock, Strauk, Cooper, Creswell, Hjelda. I just don't understand the need to get him on a new deal. I don't understand it. I think it's wild. And I think the, the majority, the majority, yeah, let's not forget this, man. Let's not forget this, Ethan, quality. Let's not forget when he fucking nutmegs himself. You know what I mean? How, what a skill that is. He managed to nutmeg himself. Yes, Brompton. <laughs> I don't, you probably are, mate. You probably are, Bromo. Uh, it's mad. Honestly, my, 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 I'm like flabbergasted as to who at the at the board have gone. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a good move for the club in terms of getting him on a new deal. It's absolute just idiocy. Yeah, completely out of the blue. This is what I don't understand. Leeds United Live have done a here's how fans reacted. <laughs> like, you can imagine Mr. Rossi Strange one not being anywhere near good enough for a while. Hopefully the confidence shown in him helps him. No, he'll come out and try fucking Cruyff turn round Haaland. That's what kind of confidence. When Lorente is in confidence, he tries even worse things for me. John says on Facebook, don't understand the logic. Neither do I. That's what I mean. I genuinely don't understand the need for it. Um, Indians one says, if this is the calibre of players we're wanting to sign long-term deals with the club, then we're going backwards, not forwards. I would have to agree with that. Um, someone says, lads, he hasn't been the same since that first season. Started last season de decent enough and has um, 
fallen massively on it, off it. Someone says, come on, Diego. I mean, I don't know. I genuinely don't know what's... It's just mad. It's mad. Like, he, for me, bar Thurpo, has been the worst de- defender this season. Genuinely. And I, I have to question what's 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 Jesse's involvement. I don't think he's even involved anymore. I'm sorry. You know, all this rhetoric that goes Jesse players. I don't believe it. Yeah, Rasmus, that's about it because he were cheap. All the rest of the club would have gone after anyway. I genuinely believe that. Victor is the man pulling the strings. I've always supported Victor. I feel like had he been given more funds, we'd have a much better squad. Um, but I do you know what the, all this does as well? What's what's going to happen in January, really, realistically? Now, what's going to happen in January? Do you expect Legion? Do you know what as well? And this, I wanted to do a video on this, and it's like two things have come at once. I'm sure if you're on social media, if not, there's been like a four and a half minute compilation. Four and a half minute compilation of Leeds United's defending under Jesse Marsh, right? This isn't about the previous manager, so don't throw that out on me because I'm sick of that as well. Like you can't, you can't honestly have a conversation about Jesse Marsh stylistically without being told you're bumming Bielsa. Like that's that's what gets thrown out. It does me tits in, and I think a lot of it is their own insecurities because they don't want to agree that actually, yeah, you know what? We got it wrong. I don't think this is the right guy. And stylistically, we're minging. Yeah, we're minging, right? And John says, I'm sure Leeds United have the most negative fans. Disagree. The reason I disagree is because we were getting slapped six or seven nil last season and we were chanting all the way through. No negativity, no booze. Once, once at Tottenham. Once. Once at Tottenham, and we were getting slapped six, seven nils. Not a negative bunch, trust me. I just think, like, we have to really, really question. Anyway, I've gone off piste. Back to this. The defending's absolutely woeful. Now, it's sort of counteracting what I'm going to say here, but for me, I don't think the defenders are the problem. I think the system's the problem, Yeah. We leave gaping holes at fullback. Gaping holes at fullback. Please watch that four, four and a half minute video. And still, some people, and again, you're entitled to your opinion, but I'm going to give you mine. That's what you come for. If you don't like it, like I said, I don't care. You know, you come for mine, right? I genuinely am at a stage now where I've stopped caring about social media. I've stopped caring of what people's opinions are of me. I don't care anymore. Like, genuinely, I'm just going to give it you how I see it, you know? And I just think the, the system, like, people in the comments on that video, and it's had a lot, a lot of traction, are still saying it's the defenders. Now, of course, they are culpable in certain areas, but even the best centre back in world football, the best, uh, sorry, even the best full back in world football, even the best full backs since forever. Lam, Cafu, whoever you like, yeah? Roberto Carlos. They cannot be in two places at once. There's literally... You could fit a bus in between the space between the fullback and the player that's receiving the ball. And somehow, if we had an amazing fullback, he'd be able to split himself in half and be in two places at once. It's a system issue. System issue. And this, this is mad, yeah. I watched that press conference yesterday. Joe Donoghue asked Jesse a specific question about how City will line up. And I genuinely, all I heard was noise in response. And I'm not, uh, uh, I don't know a lot about tactics. I try and educate myself. I listen to T4. I listen to The Athletic. I listen to, you know, all stats. At me. I'm, not, I'm not sitting here saying that I know all these things, because I don't, yeah? I'm only giving you my interpretation, my view on it, yeah? But I, 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 when I heard him respond to that question from Joe, I'm like, what are you even saying? What's actually being said? I don't know. Is it just noise? 
And everyone who's worked under him loves him, right? Because he's a great guy. I think he's a great guy. If he ever seen me, I probably wouldn't like what I've said. But I think he's a great guy. In terms of man management, great, amazing, says some amazing things. But I just think tactically, and, and, and it really worried me against Monaco, after 45 minutes, they made distinct switches, you know, get, get in behind the fullback, and we conceded three goals in 10 minutes. Three goals in 10 minutes. And then Monaco took the foot off. And then we were trying to score. And I don't, it just, we just put it into dangerous areas. We just hoof it people. There was there was one moment where Luke Kaling had it and he literally just goes, like put, throws it back in there. It's minging. But people will say to me, oh, yeah, but we're getting slapped by Bielsa. I didn't, I didn't mention Bielsa. I'm not talking about Bielsa. And again, it's it's a fail safe to say, well, things won't be better under previous manager. I've I've wedded my, you know, I'm wedded to this guy, so therefore, you know, I'm just gonna agree with everything. And I, I probably sound I probably sound um what's the hypocritical because I were like that would be Elsa, so I should understand it more. But as you know, football fans are fickle. Football fans have their opinion. Football fans die by their opinion. I just don't think this guy's got it. Now, we might be sitting and I'll be going, Jesse, do you know what I mean? That might be it. But, but oh, I just, I just, I just think we've come, we haven't even kicked a ball in the Premier League and I already feel doomed. <laughs> I already feel doomed. I already feel doomed. And we haven't even kicked a ball yet. We haven't even returned, man. It's mad. Do me a favour, uh, smash a like on the video for me if you haven't already. It would be great if you could do that for me. Uh, we've only got 57 likes. Um, what does Jesse have to do with Laurenti being re-signed? Sham? No, I was talking about his system. But also, Jesse has... This is the point, Sham. This is why I start to question whether or not Jesse's got uh, an influence, as big an influence as we would like, as a big, as big an influence as we would like in terms of player recruitment, because a manager should be consulted on whether a player is given a new deal. 100%. For me, anyway. It might work different, different clubs, but if you've got a manager... If you've got a manager who you think is going to be here long term, then you say to that guy, do you want him? We can't compartmentalise it and it just turns into a bash Jesse fest. Different point, bro. Different point. I was on about the system stylistically. I was on about the system stylistically. I'm, I'm, Andrew, wrong. 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 And I'm going to show you as for why, right? People say it's a bit of both. Okay, there might be something in it. If you think it's just the players, I think you're wrong. And I'm going to share a few images with you of stills that I took from this video. I can't show you the video because the video will, will mean that, the, that my video gets taken down. I don't want to do that, right? I want to show you just a few stills, few images, right? And tell me what the, what, what, a, a better fullback does, right? Tell me, like, explain to me this picture, right? Explain to me this picture. What 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 does a better player do? A manage a manage to be able to fill this massive gap, or would he not even be in that position in the first place? But if he was in that, if he weren't in that position in the first place and was wary as Zaha, then there'd be a massive gap here. Because guess what? The manager says, forget about what's on the wing and I'll just go towards the ball. Half the time, the fullback here is right next to his centre-backs because all Jesse's bothered about is the position of the ball. So what does a better fullback for you do about him? What does he do? What does a better player do? There are many, 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 many more images that, 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 that show this. 
please go and watch this video here. Um, you will see there is a player available at the back post in every single occasion. Look at this man here. Wh where's the fullback? If it's a better player, I do not agree. Oh, there you go. There's just Monaco. This goes on for four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes. Okay? It's the system. I could understand. I could understand. Uh, 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 I could understand if it was once or twice. But that video goes on for four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes, you know. So, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. But, listen, that's why, what I don't understand is, right, and I have to bring up the big man's name here. It was, right, it was never, ever, never, ever blamed on the players under Bielsa. It was all about him. It was all about him. Now, it's the players. Now it's the players and not the manager. I don't understand the difference. Do you see what I'm saying? I do not under... That is where my head's at. I don't understand how... Under Bielsa, it was the system. Under the new manager, it's the players. The, honestly, that video is four and a half minutes of men being at the back post on their own. Now, if that's not a system issue, then I don't know what, what is. I don't know what is. But, right, anyway... Let's get back to Diego Lorente. That was just my rant on that. Um, again, it, it comes back to that point of like, why why we've made a decision to, uh, I feel bad, but he's tweeted out to say, happy and excited to have signed a new contract with Leeds. Now let's get to hard work and give everything there for this incredible club. Grateful to all the staff, players and fans who have helped me through good times and bad. Majority bad. Majority bad. Um, yes, tell them, John. Preach it, bro. Preach it. Preach it. You know? Um, I didn't even... I don't, I don't even see Diego starting against City. So why is a guy... Why have we signed him on a new deal? I, I, I am flabbergasted as to why... He's there, but but and anti, I hear what you're saying. He's played well at times, yeah, but well enough to warrant a new deal. I don't think so, and that's my opinion. And what I will say as well, if we stick with Jesse, and that's fine, right? But we all say. We, we all say it needs improving. It needs improving. Needs improving. Do you have confidence that we will continue to improve if we're signing Diego Lorenzi on a new deal that will see him here to 2026? Because if he's getting a new deal, everyone else should be knocking at the door. I, do, I Honestly... Good point by Ads. He's dropped him. He's dropped him. Brought him back in. He was shocking and he got dropped again. And now we're giving him a new deal. Who's making the decisions? Victor. The club. Is Jesse a yes man? Do you remember all the issues that we were told were all Bielsa's fault? You know what I mean? 
that we were told were all Bielsa's fault. It's all happening again. Kev, it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Imagine. Imagine it does. I just think it's mad. Yeah, yeah, Frank, what a legend. That's brilliant. It's true. Someone said that on Twitter at this point. I think I'm going to end up getting a deal. Someone said it's around maximising commercial value. What, 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 what value does Lorente give us commercially? <laughs> That's wild. Someone's responded, it's about maximising commercial value. What value commercially does Diego Lorente have? Spain don't want him. Spain don't like him. Real Sociedad wanted rid. What kind of uh, rhetoric is that? Maximising commercial value. I could understand if it were one of the American lads. Not Diego. What what commerciality is Diego bringing us? Give over. That's crazy. That's craziness. Let's see what's being said on the old mat. I'd love to see what my good friend Connor's had to say. <laughs> Oh, I can imagine he's at the roof, um, as many, 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 many people will. Um, it's it's wild. I'm just uh, exploring Twitter. Um, yeah, I, I, I genuinely am surprised and shocked as to the thinking behind um, giving... giving Diego a new, a new contract... Um, it makes no sense. I'd love to see the official piece. Um, let's have a look. Let's see what it says there. Here you go. Let me get rid of that in bottom corner. Don't want that, do we? So this is the uh, official announcement. Um, defender commits future to Leeds. Leeds United are pleased to announce Diego Laurenti has signed a new contract with the club. Spaniard has penned a three and a half year extension running until the summer of 2026. Um, one sec, put me in corner here. Um, a full Spain international with 10 caps to his name. Wait till we hear that in the in the programme notes as well. World Cup winner, that's what it'll get spun by. He once he, he played for the nation that once won a World Cup. Uh, Lorente joined the Whites back in September 2020 following the promotion to the Premier League. He's made 55 appearances, netting four times. Um in his first campaign, Lorente helped Leeds finish in ninth spot, whilst last season he was just part of the site of my memory. <laughs> done. So far this term, the defender has featured nine times in all uh, competitions. All at Leeds are pleased to have uh, seen Diego commit his future to, to the club. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, let's. Uh, I just want to see of them... Um, of them uh, starts under Jesse this term, how many of them have, sorry, of the under the minutes given, how many of them were actually uh, starts. Um, I'm just checking on FB ref. Um, so he's, he's played seven times this season. Seven times he's played. Um, out of 14 games plus two cup games. So less than half, and he signed a new three and a half year deal. I guess it was running out this summer. I just don't, I just don't need the. I, I just didn't see the need. Um, lead Sayer will be thirty three. Diego Lorente will be thirty three. In um. In two thousand and twenty six. Um. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a bit mad, isn't it? It's a bit mad that he's been given a new deal. I almost feel bad, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, so, was it June 2024? Three and a half year deal? Maybe it's a, red a reduction in wages, but again, I can't see that. I can't see that. He can turn a game in seconds, can Diego I for, for the other fecking opposition. It's mad, isn't it? I'm really as to as uh, a loss. And then it also brings into sharp focus 
January as a as a whole, like will does this deplete funds? Does this cause issues? I don't know. It's all different. It's all in the same fucking bracket, isn't it, really? Yes, Ben. Um, I don't know, like, where we move. Um, like, I listened to the Phil Hay podcast earlier on. Clubs seem confident they can get a left-back and a striker. Um, not sure. Justin makes a good point. Is Creswell up for sale now? You just don't know, do you? You just don't know, because I'd sooner let Lorente run his contract down and do one and have Creswell back. Yeah, Malcolm, I am, mate, I am. But it's not just, it's just a microcosm of a bigger thing, isn't it? I think, you know, Diego signing a new deal, I'm genuinely out of the blue flabbergasted by the decision, um, especially when you consider, like, we have... Cooper, Cock, Lorente, Aileen can play there, although he shouldn't be, Strouk, uh, Creswell. Like, listen, let's even be real here, right? If we actually had a left-back, Diego Lorente's minutes would be even less because Pascal would be playing centre-back. So what else does that tell you? Does that tell you that the club are happy to with running with Pascal? Because you've got to look at it and say, do you know what, actually... If we have Robin Cock and Pascal Strout fit, Diego Lorente doesn't even get a look in. So why are we giving him a new deal? Like when you factor that in, unless we're not going to go and get a left back and just leave Pascal there. You know? He's also very injury prone, as John says. That's, that's another point. But we all want Pascal to play at centre back. Everyone keeps saying it. So if we go out and get a left back, and he usurps Pascal. Pascal then moves into centre back and takes over Cooper. I'm not his biggest fan, but he's much more reliable than the rest. Cock would be the right centre back. I thought he was really good against Monaco. So Lorente doesn't even feature. Now, if I was if we're told that Lorente's took reduced terms and he's happy with his squad position then maybe, maybe, you just never know. But I think in itself, without knowing all them details, it seems mental. And he's, and he's totally out of the blue and unnecessary for me. Um, and yeah, like I say, what's next? The Furpo deal. You know, is Furpo going to get a new new deal as well. It's mad, isn't it? It really is um, a little bit mad, if I'm being totally honest, as to what the decision is behind it. What have you seen from performances from Diego Lorente over the past 18 months that have warranted a new three-and-a-half-year deal? If you can tell me, give me five examples, because you need more than one. This is a new deal, a new contract, a new long-term deal that sees him till 2026. You need to say, yeah, I agree with you, D. You know, he's not taking reduced terms. No, I agree with you. Um, thoughts on Mark Jackson going to MK Dons? Good for him. I, I understand it. Corbrand did the same and it, it went successful for him. Of course you want a top job. Of course you want a top job. Um... MK Dons is a great job for for um, for Mark Jackson. Be interesting to see what happens with Leeds. Maybe we'll leave something more because I genuinely believe Jesse is more of a group coming together. We know that the players also are involved in decisions because he has a leadership group. Um, and I think his coaches all work in tandem as well. I just think it's very school, senior school, Sunday league kind of vibes have set up me. Someone put on, yeah, I'm part of a group chat and someone said he's leaving before his uh, reputation gets tarnished. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. I can't lie. I just think it's a bit of a mad setup. 
Uh, Sean Healy says, Lorente must have dirt on all our shame about Mark Jackson. Yeah, it will be disappointing that Mark Jackson's left us because no doubt he will have helped Jesse a lot. Uh, I think Jesse said that as much. Um, so it is a big loss. Of course it is. But he's going to need to be re replaced. Um, this is a good point, Helen. You know I love him, but I agree now at this point he's done. Wouldn't surprise you, would it? Furpon Bamford. End of January window, right? Let's have a picture of Bamford, Lorente and Furpo all like that. <laughs> Going like that. As everyone as everyone else signs players for like 40, 50 million. And we're like rumbling around trying to find ways to uh, get funds to get a loan over the line or something. That's the truth of it. Because of the situation with the ownership as well, at what stage, like, we just have to get to the summer now. We have to get to the summer and hope that we're in the league. Because Rad, th this is the situation we find ourselves in because of the ownership. Like, if, like the 49ers, the 49ers can't invest. Because imagine, right, think of it from a business perspective. And listen, I didn't do GCSE business. I don't have a Scooby-Doo, but I'm just trying to think with my own head, right? If 49ers put money in and we went down, that's not protecting their investment, is it? If they put money in and a load of players, right, and then bought us in the summer and we're in the championship, they might as well have pissed that money up the wall. Does that make sense? Because the cost of player and the wages, etc., you then might have to move them players on because they want to stay in the Premier League, etc. And it's also a little bit for Rad's the same. Why am I going to spend money, like large amounts of money, to keep us in the Premier League? Because I'm leaving at the end of the season. Does that make sense? Or am I talking rubbish? Like, either which way, neither of them want to put cash in. Now, we know the 49ers want it. They have a chance to buy it next January. So, of course, they'll buy it in the summer ahead of that. We know Pete Lowey, I think, wants, you know, parts of the land behind the East and why. It'll obviously be building some at man. He's a rich guy, he's artly, that's what I mean. We're just waiting. But neither... Um, Neither will want to really invest. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's that's it. I feel. Um, see, that's not true, though, is it? No, it's not true at all. Anyway, sorry, I'm just re responding to it. To a tweet. Um, yeah, I'm a bit as to loss uh, as to words. It's genuinely like read the room, isn't it? At what stage have they come to the decision that this is best for all parties? Because it doesn't seem the best decision from a footballing sense for me. Free falling. Yeah, let me respond to this. I admit I'm very, very fickle, okay? But people like yourself that have made comments about me in previous windows, I've been the one who's been right. So you believe the hype, believe the rhetoric, um, believe everything you read and hear from the club sources, yeah? Um, I don't know it, mate. I don't know it. But what I'll say to you is, everything you are saying there, I've said in previous windows. Now, and I've, I've turned out to be right. I haven't, I haven't for one second, sorry, I'm, I'm not picking my nose, I'm moving my piercing. I haven't for one second said that we're not going to sign anyone. Did I? I don't think I have. Am I happy with how it's been run? No, I'm not. Thank you, bro. Cheers, mate.
If you actually go back and check the receipts, the day the season finished, the day after I said that was happening, the day after the Brentford game, I said that was happening. While everyone else was telling you we were getting Kamara, I said that was happening. Now, you know, uh, I, I also said we wouldn't sign a let. I, I've also said all these things. So that's fine. No, exactly. You can't always be right, bro. You can't always be right. And I sit here and I lean into the fact that I am fickle. I know this. But so are you. So is every football fan. And if you don't accept that, then you're talking rubbish. Because for me, football fans are fickle. Because Lorente is getting the lightning rod. Now he could come back, score a goal against City, and I'll be going, Lorente, get in. That is fickle. Them people that are celebrating in that ground are being fickle. Football fans are fickle. It is what it is, bro. It is what it is, my guy. But I'm really grateful for you being here. It's never personal. I'm really grateful for you being here, genuinely. Um, I don't know if he. I don't know if he got <laughs> Ian. I don't know if he what the terms are um, of his deal. Do you know? What? I, like just to say. Like, who can forget, right? What I would ask you to do if you, like, you've got to read between the lines, right? Read between the lines. Jesse Marsh now, right? Remember, last summer, in the summer, yeah, Andy, I still think he's gash. Perfect. I still don't rate him. Someone said he's underappreciated. Do you know, and this is a sorry state of affairs for me as a Leeds United fan that shows how and how long we dropped is the fact that he's two goals away from entering the top 10 all-time Premier League goal scorers for Leeds. Rodrigo. It's actually a little bit disheartening for me that I think, wow, two more goals in and he's in our top 10 all-time leading goal scorers in the Prem. It makes me feel shit because he should be nowhere near that list. But unfortunately, we're out for 15, 16 years. Do you know what I mean? Ugh. Ugh. So I don't think it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is what I mean, bro. I, I'm not. I'm not the fan that is wedded to an idea, yeah, and never changes his opinion. I, ne I, I never get that. When I'm wrong, I'll hold my hands up. I stick my head above the parapet. Naturally, I get flack with that, and that's totally fine. It comes with the territory. But what I'm saying is, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I will say that. Do you know what I mean? I will say that. Um, I will say that. But yeah, listen, I, I just don't have... The reason is because I don't have any confidence in this board. Do you? Like calling me fickle before January's even started. What I'll say to you is... Wolverhampton Wanderers have signed Matthias Kuna before January's even started. Where are we? Where are we? Do you know the left back and striker that the club say they're getting in January? Me, you, and all the rest in this chat said they needed it in the fucking summer. No, I know you don't have a problem. Free falling. Never take this personally. It's not personal from my, my standpoint. I'm very passionate about my club. I'm very passionate about my opinions. I am very highly opinionated. I suppose that why it works. It's never meant in any sort of um, negative way. But, but saying negativity attracts negativity. If I also came on here and was positive, I'd be lying to you, bro. So I'm not going to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like I've heard people say before, oh, I've tried to be positive and you still don't like it. I don't try to be anything. I try, I'll be me. I'll be me. People always thought I was at, like in Cloud Cuckoo Land under Bielsa, but I believed. I don't believe anymore. This is just me. No ways and grace is just me. Do you know what I mean? But what there's the case in point. The club now, what we're hearing on podcasts from those that are in the know, 
Phil here from articles from the YEP is that the club are confident they will get a striker and a left back. Do you know that condescending nature in which we were spoken to in the programme notes and on interviews about that we didn't have a Scooby-Doo? Well, guess what? I, some clown in a room in YouTube, you folks at home watching, all said we needed a striker and left back. And now the club, six months into the season, are saying, oh, yeah, we need we need a striker and a left back. I could have told you that. I, I also say we need a centre midfielder. We need a centre midfielder. But the club won't do it. And we'll get to February. And either Rocker or Adams will get an injury. And we'll be relying on Adam Forshaw in our third season in the Premier League. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. You know? So that's yeah, yeah. We need a centre back, but then, but this is this is the 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 problem, isn't it? On the centre back front, I agree with you, but I'm not so I'm not so confident anymore because we're signing the centre backs we've got on long term deals. So, where's the sense? Where's the sense in that? Because we're signing the defenders we've got on long-term deals. Let me, i tell you what, my good friend James Marshman from uh, Team Talk, who's been on, on my show a few times, um, tweeted out the contract situation um, at Leeds United. <clears throat> um, he had 18 months left. 18 months left. I'd have let him run it down. 18 months. Right, but let's just have a look at the current situation, right? So this is James Marshman's tweets. So this is um this is uh updated uh Leeds defenders after renewals, right? For Strauch and Laurenti. So you've got Christensen till 2027. I think drama's going regardless. I don't think he signs a new deal. He might go. The club say they want him here. I don't see Cody Drama's going to sign a new deal, is he? He's going to go on that. I've had, you, you've had ample opportunities. He wanted out under Bielsa. He's wanted out under Marsh. I think he doesn't sign a new deal. So for whatever happens, Drama for me will leave the football club. This could be Aileen's last season. Looking at the fact that Diego Lorente has got a new deal, you've got to imagine Cox getting one. And I'd, I'd say Cox deserves one. Although I'm not his biggest fan, I think Cox deserves one. Seen that as well, Justin. I had to laugh. I had to laugh, bro, because Burnley and Watford have been credited with interest in him. All this talk of Dortmund, man. Come on, man. His agent's good. I tell you that much. Um, Lorente, 2026. Cooper last season, maybe. Strout, 2027. Firpo, I mean, if he gets a new deal, I think I'm done. Kjelder and Creswell. These two will need new deals as well. Soon. Cock is a solid option, yeah, Lewis. You're right. I'm just not his biggest fan. It. I think it's more so because everyone's been going on like he's been the second coming of Baresi, and I just don't see what they see. I do think he is very, very strong, though, mate. I do think he is very, very good. You know, he showed that against Monaco. He was good. He was good. Um, he's just that, and he is just good. You know what I mean? He's not like Lorente, calamity. You don't know what you're going to get. You know, Lorente could come against City and be amazing. But, you know, it's not enough to turn your opinion for me. That's what I'm saying. It's like with Rodrigo. I get hammered for my opinion on Rodrigo. And it's like, yeah, a couple of games, mate. Let, let's chill out. Okay, it has been. Um, yeah, and uh, this is where I'm at as well, bro, because of it. This is where I'm at as well. I don't understand um, the... Yeah, because it it, it it does... Yeah, that's a good way of um, explaining cock. He's competent. He's got a competent cock. It's been said to me many times. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I just don't know. I think the only way it would make sense is if he's took reduced terms, because for me, he's not our starting centre-back and shouldn't be. Yeah, Luis, Lorente's distribution can be good, but it's too inconsistent, isn't it? Far too inconsistent. 
far too inconsistent and doesn't warrant a new deal. And you can argue, like Matt says, we are rewarding mediocrity. We are rewarding mediocrity. And I have to go along with that. I have to go along with that. Oh, I've been rambling on enough, Annie, about Diego Lorente. I, oh, I do feel a little bit bad because it's like it's celebration time for him and the club are buzzing, but I'm just not. I just don't know. Um, <laughs> Lewis says Dan James and Tyler Roberts again. Yeah, the recruitment's not been great, has it? It's not been great. And I know he was signed under Bielsa, but Bielsa didn't even want another centre-back. We did need one, though, because he ended up... We, we did need him. We did need him, but they had to sort of force him on him a little bit. So he's one of Victor's reclamation projects. Um, I just think it's wild. It's wild. I don't know if he has. He might be out, but if he has Ross, he'll be going wild as well. It'd be funny to see. Connor's reaction. <laughs> hey, I tell the, tell the. Right, folks, I've rambled on enough for an now. We got an hour out of that. I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> I'll be. Um, I'm going to be back tonight. Actually, uh, I've got a live stream at eight o'clock with some other Premier League fans. The Premier League preview returns. Premier League's back, people. The Premier League is back. Obviously, we've got a whole host of Boxing Day figures. Fixtures, sorry, I think Man United Forest play Tuesday night and then we play Wednesday. Um, so make sure you join me for that if you're stuck for something to do. Uh, eight o'clock, I'll be live and um, smash the like before you go. Yeah, please, um, please do. And um, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. Listen, I'll have like preview. I'm going to try and get a City fan on as well. Um, Arthur says lay off Lorente now. He's Legion out of player. No, I won't, mate. He's shit. Um, get it up your half of Bushby. Um, <laughs> when they cross the when they cross the white line, they have my full support. Yeah. Sean says, can't wait to see the All Leeds TV lads reaction. Yeah, make sure you go show some love over there as well. When he crosses the white line, you have my full support. In the cold light of day when we're having a conversation over a drink or in this forum, would you say, oh, he's a Leeds player, so therefore I have to blindly support the guy? No, he's dead. He's rubbish. Shouldn't have got a new deal. And that's my opinion. There you have it. And the club are rewarding mediocrity. The club are not reading the room. I'm not confident for January just don't know anymore and I'm not and it's it's all a bigger picture for me because I'm not sure on the manager either because I think it's very Sunday league I think it's all it's all all skirt no knickers all fluff no knickers whatever that saying is um it's all all words but we'll see we'll see thanks for tuning in I'll have some preview and all that sort of stuff but I uh, really enjoy being able to do this content. I'm, I'm grateful you come for my opinion. I'm sorry if I've upset anyone, but as I say, I'm giving you my opinion. If you don't like it and it makes you angry and wants to vent at me, you can vent. But if it gets personal, I'd just say to you, just don't watch it. Because if I don't like something, I don't watch it. Um, but yeah, listen, thanks always for tuning in. I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas, by the way. It's been a very, very tough year. Um, it's been a very tough end to the year for me personally, but I think for a lot of you as well with the cost of living crisis, the fact that we've got the minging Tory government in charge that just do not support the working man. Don't believe all the tripe they tell you that, you know, the postal workers, the nurses, the ambulance drivers, they're not the problem. It's the government. Make sure when the next general election comes around, you go to your polling station and you vote these fuckers out, right? I understand some of you might not agree with the opposition and might say they're no good either, but they're a lot better than what's in currently. So just, yeah, please do that. Um, I couldn't, I, temp name, I don't care how they get the money, bro, but it's a damn sight better. And what we're dealing with right now, right? 
cost of living crisis, the lot, yeah, not taxing these big energy firms so that people dare put the heating on, all this sort of stuff. It's an absolute joke, right? But let's leave it there. Love you all. Genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, have an amazing Christmas, right? Have an amazing Christmas and a great new year. And uh, thank you for all your support in 2022. The channel has just gone amazing. We set the target of 20,000. We didn't get there. We're close to 17. Hopefully, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, genuinely, those that are here, we can go in. If I want to bring in politics into my videos, I will, bro. Again, it's my forum. I have a voice. And what I'm going to say is, da, 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 da. Fuck the Tories. That's my opinion, all right? Um, thanks always for watching. Um, I understand it's not for anyone's taking, but all I was saying is cost of living crisis. I don't know why I went down that rabbit hole, but I've gone there, right? I've gone there. I've gone there. I'm sorry, but, like, at the end of the day, I just think we need to change after 12 years, as my good friend Lucy M says. Um... <laughs> Everyone's like, stay away, Joe. Stay away. No, I do. I try to, but I'm just annoyed at the um at the state of the country right now and poverty and people on the breadline and all that shit. You know, it's really, really upsetting. And also I see people having to go up postal workers and all this sort of stuff, all those that are striking. And I'm just like, nah, they're not the problem. This is what they want. They want us to fight and argue with one another, to take away from the fact that them, the ones that have got their boot on our neck, they've got the boot on the neck. And there's too many people in the country think they're middle class, think they're above them think they're better than their common man who's, you know, all these programs that perpetuate the bullshit that scroungers lay about. They don't get a job. They've got five kids. How can they afford the fags? All that bullshit you hear comes from people who are also working class who think they're not, who think they're above them. So look down on, look down on and... Yeah, it's a voyeuristic society, innit? It all benefits Britain and all that shit that they fed us. That I watched until I opened my eyes a little bit and thought, nah. Anyway. Yeah, it's all bullshit. Listen, thanks as always for watching. I was supposed to leave it, innit? I love you all. Have a great Christmas. If you're stuck for anything to do, Broken Britain indeed. If you're stuck for anything to do, then make sure you join me at 8 o'clock for a Premier League preview, and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you very much. Um, love you, and leave ya. Du, du, 